today uh, the the students and our M and D students have the opportunity to hear about our ten catalytic niche areas, as um, already mentioned by uh, Ms. Makanye. I I facilitate quite extensively on on the accelerated masters and doctoral program that we we run throughout the year. So many of you will know me from that, but. This, of course, should tie in quite well with the, the things that you've been exposed to. I have a presentation and I will share that presentation on the screen with you in a minute. Once, of course, I've finished the presentation, I will share it with the facilitators of this session so they too can can have it available to share with with you as the attendees of of this session. Part of what I I do when I do this presentation is I will try to give examples. The examples may not uh, specifically speak to your to the discipline you're in, but what I'm interested in doing is making sure that you get the principles. If by any chance you are more interested in this than what the session offers you, my recommendation is that you join us on the uh, accelerated program because we have uh, capacitation workshops that we do there. So we support the students to take their individual ideas and kind of uh, make them uh, become optimized, implementable and so forth. OK, so. Um, just for the purposes of this presentation, uh, we are going to use the word optimizing <clears throat> because essentially what we are, we are training you to do is to make the most use of the catalytic niche areas without yourself becoming a specialist in that field so and and I always find it important that I I speak to this to how the catalytic niche areas relate to you because um often there's confusion that if you are in a space where a university says these are our, our niches, it's as if we are forcing you to to jump from your if you're studying English to jump from English to adopt our niches. Uh, that is not what the optimization process, uh, the optimization in, um, uh, uh, initiative is about. It is about growing legs and arms on your current research focus so that it it embeds within it one or more of these areas. So all that we're really doing with the optimization of niche areas is that we are asking the students to become aware of this, of certain priorities that exist for the nation, that exist for the university. And we are saying that in your specific topic that you currently have, is there an opportunity for you to add an angle that involves one or more of these niches? And, and I will explain it to you in a much more systematic way so that it makes sense. And this basically is embedded in the whole idea of multidisciplinarity. It's embedded in the whole idea of, um, it's embedded in the, in the whole idea of interdisciplinarity, it's embedded in the whole idea of, of uh, transdisciplinarity. So being able to add more complexity, more disciplines, more focus areas to your study so that it, 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 it reflects the comp complexity of the world. Um, we would all agree, and very few people would disagree with this, that there is no single life problem that exists and can be solved by one discipline. If you take a disease, a disease is probably likely to have a mathematical face to it. It's likely to have a disease management face to it. It's likely to have a social sciences face to it. It will have a psychology face to it, all those types of things. So all that uh, is essentially what um, this presentation will do for you. Once I get into the presentation, we should actually start to see everything else disappear, except just uh, there are these update issues that keep coming up and causing me problems. Okay, 
So the session that I have for you has got very five very specific um, objectives that I want to achieve. Firstly, it's important for us to set the context around UNISA's catalytic niche areas. And when I say setting the context, we, we, you need to understand as a student why such uh, niching of specific disciplines, specific problems is important and necessary for UNISA and necessary for a university full stop. Then we also uh, will speak in much more detail about why UNISA had to specifically specify certain niche areas and, and why we promote them. What it is that you as a st student tends to gain, what the university will gain, what South Africa will gain, what Africa will gain, what the world will gain. So we'll speak through that. Then uh, I will name the niche areas and usually <clears throat> I, I must say when, when I do much longer presentations and I have a whole day, we will detail each of the niches and work on them. But for the purposes of this presentation, I will name them. Uh, many of are self-explanatory. <clears throat> and, and the secret or the important thing is not knowing how to define them. The important thing is, is knowing how they have the potential of being relevant to your work. So, so some people get a, a little bit disappointed that there is no standout session on definitions and so forth, but you will all know that really if it was about definitions, I could give you the list and just tell you to spend the next 10 minutes googling all the definitions. So this engagement has to be much more astute than just that. And then of course, um, we, we will speak about, in, in your case as students, we will talk about the possibilities for, for integrating uh, niche areas and we'll look at some of the ways in which people do it. I will, I tend to sort of come up with a number of off the cuff questions about integration. I also invite you as the listeners to post if say you have a particular topic that you're looking at and you're interested in, in, in one of the niches being a prominent uh, discipline of interest within your study, you can always post the question or on, on our chat and when we finish, I can speak to that interest much more specifically. But the principles are, are, are very, the principles are very straightforward, hey? Um, in, in, in this space that we're in, we'll do very clearly uh, objective one, two and three. When it comes to four and five, we will modify them for the utilization of niche areas by students. So <clears throat> in setting the scene, the first thing that we need to be clear about is that every university has specified niche areas. And um, I'm saying niche areas, not catalytic niche areas. And I want you to be able to tell, to differentiate. Uh, the first, and, and with niche areas, basically, uh, anytime we, a, a new vice chancellor is installed or appointed or inaugurated, um, <clears throat> they they come they come with the background, they come with the vision that they want to add to accelerate the university's prominence as a high pedigree institution. And and our vice current vice chancellor, when she did her uh, investiture. Uh, and commemorative uh, speech in September 2021 stated very clearly that one of my priorities is the extent to which public research can galvanize the university community and, and enhance its collaboration with our wider community. Uh, our, our thinking as we engage with these niche areas will also benefit from yet another reflection that the VC makes and that reflection has become the hallmark of what UNISA is about. And it is about reclaiming Africa's intellectual futures. So in essence, what the university is saying is that, look, um, we have had a lot of research carried out by public research spaces, such as this university. 
and these research priorities have tended to be focused on individual interest without really looking at looking outwardly at what the community are struggling with and making that our priority. So many of our students, many of us, the researchers, have things we like to study and we study them without very disciplined commitment to the fact that this has to be something that is currently known to be challenging the wider community. These niche areas that have been specifically highlighted by the VC were highlighted because they speak to evidence that we have, they speak to understandings that we have about areas that are priorities and areas that require very specific attention so Africa can begin to uh, maximally utilize its intellectual capacity uh, so that we can also deal with things that are currently at our feet and causing us the most challenges. So that was in essence what the ambition of the vice chancellor is. And of course, generally in universities, there's a number of reasons uh, universities promote and specify specific topics that they want to see and want to be associated with. So firstly, you as students will, will know one or two things. When you study, it is quite a difficult financial balancing act for you to be able to actually study and do everything that your study requires from you because ultimately you you are limited by the bursaries we give you or those of you who haven't earned bursaries you're limited financially and students always wonder how do i harness my grant attainment possibilities how can i study something that is the likelihood of attracting money of attracting some type of money to support my study so I can go out and collect data with everybody without worrying about the fact that I wish I could do it this way, but I can't because of finance. When a university identifies niche areas and catalytic niche areas for that fact, we do so because we, we spend time investigating areas that we believe have lots of grant opportunities that are that are lying around. And if our students had topics that are in that field, we could actually direct them to grant application possibilities. So when they study, they, they study something that's that has the potential to, to have funding so they don't struggle. So the reason we promote these niches is firstly to harness your grant attainment possibilities. There's an interesting statistic. So UNISA, before um, it had these niche areas that we are pushing, had quite an adverse and un unacceptable grant attainment statistic. Out of every one of our 37 masters and doctoral students, we only have two students that have grants that they've attained outside of our UNISA bursary system. So in essence, two out of 37 have done that. But guess what? On average, comparable universities have the opposite. That out of 37 people, they actually have 35 of their students whose training, whose study is funded by external grants and only two who have not gone down that route. So we are literally a funnel turned upside down. That where we are meant to have very wide reach, we have the thinnest reach. So we need to change that and change that drastically because we can't have you as students suffer when you are uh, carrying out your studies. And of course, once you limit, if you know what a study really requires and you only do a little bit because of finance, when people are critiquing your work later, they don't give you extra accommodation, extra concessions, because you studied it when you were uh, financially uh, incapacitated or whatever. They, they assess the entire work. They critique it as if you had all the resources on earth. So it's only in, it's, it's necessary for us as a university to, to enable that part. And as I say, we, 
we are harnessing that, but we've also ring fenced potential money for your supervisors to be able to access specific money to support you as students if you have very specific and well um, articulated niche focuses that you have. So, so that's the first reason why we needed to promote this. Secondly, <clears throat> Uh, we chose the specific niche areas because we want to address the legacy of underrepresentation of specific priority groups within specific disciplines. So, um, I one of the areas of study that I've done is psychology, and typically in psychology you will get um, less than two percent of the of people in that field are from marginalized groups. So, so if you were to go now to UNISA's psychology department and just look at the split between particular racial groups, particular disadvantaged populations, you would find that this is a very clear demarcation uh, and the legacy of underrepresentation still kind of continues. We have the same issue in the sciences the technology spaces, engineering and mathematical spaces where maybe there's a gender division. We have there are very specific fields where you. You can without even being in the field know that you're going to struggle to find this specific underrepresented group. So by us identifying certain things as niche areas and forcing them onto your awareness making you aware of the fact that you could integrate this we increase the chances of better representation for students like yourself so the the identification is also to address this historical social inequity that needs to be fixed because once if 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 for example one of our uh, one one of our areas that we've chosen and you will see is marine studies uh, if you were to go and look at marine specialists, chances are you will struggle to find someone from a black ethnic minority group for reasons to do with the legacy of the, the space. But guess what? Marine issues affect black ethnic people. And sometimes we get into a space where we think the compassion capability of someone from who is outside of your, of your, of your, of your group is limited by virtue of the fact that they simply don't know what you walk through. So we need to address that and do it intentionally and have a very systematic approach to it. And this is one of the reasons we specify niche areas. Thirdly, uh, as I've said, we there are very specific issues that are a problem that the world can't fix. Our social spaces are struggling with. Um, the, the environment in which we operate is challenged by, and we need to give structured attention to those. So we, the niche areas we've got, have got all these, they've been chosen for at least one of these reasons. Then of course, finally, um, it is important that you go to a university that is respected. It is important that you go to a university that is has higher pedigree status, and that you do because it, it affects your employability. It affects all sorts of career progression issues for you as a student. And universities that have a directed university research agenda where you know they specialize in this, they generally have a better pedigree profile. They are ratings. Everything is much, much better. So having niche areas allows us to have things that we are known for specializing in. And that is why, uh, you know, if you go to uh, Harvard Medical School, Harvard Business School, people know Harvard for medicine and for business and all the other ancillary and attached disciplines benefit from that high priority given to them. Uh, similarly, you go to to some universities that are known for their law school. Vitz is known for its business school um, and so forth and having that thing that stands out helps to give the university higher pedigree and it has a direct and upward impact for all the people associated with 
with the university. So you as a student studying something totally unrelated, you could be studying theology, you benefit from a, 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 a better profile within your university. Similarly, if your university has negative publicity, it may not be in your department, but it affects you. So what we do with all these niche areas is we're specifying them so that we can really get to the nub of, of improving your outcome as a student. So the, uni uh, the VC, through a lot of all the things I've mentioned already, investigated and looked at all the, the areas that we need to use as catalysts. We need to use them we need to to uh, use them. We need to focus them in a in a way to speed up our ability as Africa to reclaim our intellectual futures, to address things that are loose fitting, to deal with the legacy of underrepresentation, to also give you as students better access to financial support for your studies and your career going forward. So, and these are the 10 niche areas that we landed on. Uh, people will criticize them and all sorts of things, but the bottom line is this. They are not, we are not prescribing that you move from your department and become one of these specialists in one of these. We are saying to you, look at your current topic and see how you can, whether there is a possibility for a very intentional, and 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 explicit in integration of at least one of these. I generally ask and advise students that look, don't seek more than one because they tend, they all require a very different type of focus when you integrate them. And the minute you do more than one, you are in a little bit of trouble. There are some people that are already in spaces where these things are natural things. So if say you are a student in the College of Education, the student support and core curricular activities niche already speaks to you. Uh, if you are someone in health studies, the health studies stroke medicine one speaks to you. If you are someone from uh, a gender studies space, you already have something that speaks to you. So there isn't much to do. But the 10 niche areas are uh, marine studies is our first one. And basically this relates to all the things that we all the studies that are related with marine life, with aquatics and so forth. So uh, people will ask, ah, oh, how do I integrate this? And this is where, by the way, I will start to do some integrative work just to show you the possibilities. So take, for example, <clears throat> if you are someone who is studying an art student and I'm choosing the most obtuse, most apparently unrelated topics to show you where the multidisciplinary opportunity starts. So if say you are a student, a person, a student of art, and typically you would have maybe as your PhD work, you would have critiqued a particular worker, uh, a particular artist or particular uh, form of art as your, as your substantive doctoral work. But guess what? Um, you and I know full well that art is used in many contexts. It's used for recreational reasons. It's used for, for, for educational reasons. And interestingly, art is also used in ecology, in the studies of environments. Um, and when we talk about that, we may actually have someone who is saying, look, they want to understand so so let's take for example that you're an art student and and you you are interested in the use of art as an educational tool but what you want to look at is is art in the context of us conserving our aqua marine spaces you know there's a lot of degradation of of a um, lot of degradation of of our ocean spaces if you go to some of the uh, the the beaches you'll find that lots of dirt lots of plastics and all sorts of things are being washed out of the sea to suggest that there's much more degradation much more pollution that's going on than there ever has been 
And what people will will do is say, look, we've communicated with the world in every in every form, and they appear to not take the 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 importance of protecting our fish, protecting our marine spaces as well as they ought to. And we need to look for new avenues of communication. Art can be that avenue where you have paintings that provoke thought, uh, you have depictions, uh, statues, and all sorts of things that provoke a more thought about marine issues. You could now do a study from art, but that looks at the utilization of art as a way of, of protecting marine related focus areas and so forth. So that is that is the way that we have managed to integrate what seems to be a totally unrelated focus to 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 art studies. Similarly, uh, aviation and aeronautical studies are one of our other catalytic niche areas, uh, automotive studies, uh, energy, anything to do with energy. So anyone who's any field is any field that they're studying people from economic and management sciences can talk about energy in terms of this costing. Uh, people from uh, uh, the College of Agriculture and, and Environmental Sciences can talk about energy in terms of, uh, of um, um, you know, the, the potential bio, bio, bio options that exists that we could utilize as an option to the current reliance on ESCOM and so forth. So you realize really that all these niche areas have the potential to be spread across different spaces. Uh, the fifth one is space study, anything to do with studying um, uh, the stars and the square kilometer array. And this square kilometer array is the a particular formation of stars and so forth and, and all that. Um, then we have fourth industrial revolution and digitalization uh, and the natural sciences or in some spaces people will refer to this as biotechnological studies. Um, eight health studies and medicine and this uh, folks this particular niche uh, there is nothing on earth that's not connected to health. Uh, you can literally pick up any topic that you want and you can find a, a health angle to pursue. Uh, then the ninth one is feminist, womanist and Bosadi theorizations. And finally, because of the type of university that we're in, it's important that we look at student support and co-curricular <coughs> um, activities. Now, the question, of course, with for all of you is that, yes, you've already got topics. There's virtually no student who's in this room or listening to this who does not already have a topic. So what we are, we are not saying to you, take your topic and. Uh, we're not saying take your topic and and um, undo it and add this, but what you can do is when you are looking at topics and, and, and the focus generally with, with research, I mean, with all your studies, you should be looking at understanding a problem better. So there is no research study that you're doing which does not involve you getting better insight into a phenomena, better insight into a problem. And our insights are governed by the lens that we have, by, the, by how wide our vision is in relation to a topic. So if I were to speak to you now about, uh, say you are someone who is from the College of Education and your current study is looking at factors that affect students' ability to succeed. The factors that you will consider as being important are based on your lens. They are based on your sense of what is important or not important to student success. But if, if you knew that you should, in your lens, you should try as best as you can to see if there's literature that supports the importance of any of these things and integrate that. So, so it is possible that if you were to look at pre-existing health status of someone and how that can impact their ability to succeed in educational activities. 
you already have now opened up the possibility of saying, look, let me study how health contributes to all the other factors that I've already looked at in relation to my topic. You could decide to do the same topic, but uh, also think, look, I can see from the statistics that a particular gender seem to do better than others. I wonder if there is a basis for us integrating feminist ideologies, feminist sensitivities to understanding this. Or you can say, look, uh, I have a, I'm a student uh, and I notice that students who have very specified um, educated forms of student support or differently designed curricula proceed better than those who are at disadvantage. So you have now integrated the student support, the core curricula uh, dimension to this already in that problem that initially seemed to be about education only. I have managed to uh, add a health studies possibility to it. I've managed to add a feminist possibility to it. I've managed to add, add a student support possibility to it. So all that we are really asking of you as students right now is to say, look, we want you to retain your problem, but we want you to as you are working on that problem, assess whether there's any one of these lens, uh, any one of these ways of, of seeing problems that could be relevant. And is there research that supports them? And can you study whatever you're studying with one of the focus areas being the involvement of automotive uh, science or the involvement of energy or the involvement of fourth industrial revolution and digitalization contributions, any one of those. And that is essentially what we are trying to do. That world that we're working on is, is the world that people refer to as the world of, of um, creating multidisciplinarity into your work or interdisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity. And, and how that works really is um, if, if um, and I don't have a slide to this, but I, I want to just speak to it because I, I know that it could assist some of you in terms of how you, how you, the format for integrating these things. So firstly, uh, the, the format for integrating this can be uh, introduced at the point of conceptualizing your study. So when you're conceptualizing it and thinking about what is it that I'm going to be interested, what are the dimensions that I'm interested in in my study, you could actually integrate one of these as one of those dimensions. So you make it, uh, you make it, you, you optimize it by integrating it at conceptualization. Or if you are actually doing the study and you think I want to be interested in the view of people or spaces that relate to this. And at that point you are optimizing it through embedding it into your, into your objectives that you look at when you are actually collecting data or so forth. So the first, the first option that I spoke about was to do with uh, integrating at point of conceptualization, then you integrate at the point of 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 imperial activity. You know when you are actually doing the the sorry empirical activity when you are actually doing the data collection, or you can integrate it at the end when there's a knowledge production end. So you have three opportunities for for integration. Either when you're thinking about the study and formalizing it or as you are carrying it out and you integrate one of these things in terms of uh, making them part of the areas that you're interested in data collection, or you integrate it at the end when you are explaining what you have found out. So, and that is at the point of knowledge creation at theory development. So you could study something without any interest whatsoever in any of these, but at the end, you suddenly realize that, hey, it seems that my findings seem to differ depending on someone's health status, 
depending on what gender they're in, depending on whether they received support or not, or depending on um, other variables. And for, for that reason, your focus on the niche becomes a focus when you are now theorizing at the end to say, look, Going forward, I think this particular niche needs to be accommodated in this way and so forth. So those are the, the possibilities. But as, as you can see, we, we, we are very clear that there is, there, is a lot of, there is a lot of space. There is a lot of space for you to integrate. I have offered you uh, this, this approach of uh, integrating either at conceptualization or embedding into your data, into your empirical phase, or tagging onto your knowledge production end at the end. But really, how you get better at this, and this uh, we suggest it as a, a platform, a way of exciting and optimizing uh, the the utility and options that exist around. Uh, some of these, um, some of the, the niche area possibilities. So firstly, um, we recommend what we call academic conversations. And we are having these, uh, we are having these with uh, student groups and we'll be offering them on the accelerated uh, master's and doctoral program. And we offer them specifically for, for specific, for students in their respective colleges. So the, the project will have a date where we'll say today we are we are having an academic conversation about we're having an academic conversation about uh, the maximization of or the optimization of uh, niche areas for college X. And the reason we do it for college X is that we find that um, people from specific colleges have similar opportunities of, of optimization and similar limitations. So if I speak to an agriculture student, they'll say, hey, out of these 10 niches, here are the five that are very automatically related to me and I can make them work. But there are these two that make no sense to me. And that assessment of what's easy or what's hard or what's possible tends to be very college specific. And that's the reason why we have this engagements as colleges. Uh, we also know that uh, in the colleges, there's also the possibility for people to harness and put together uh, some of the things that are common interests so that they can build them up and really exploit the rich potentiality of, of, of whatever niche they've chosen. Um, and of course, we do realize that we are when we ask you to integrate niche areas, it's difficult to do it on your own. And you people do a much better job when they are in, in a group of similarly minded, collectively composited groups of people. And the college unit of, of, of engagement has proven to be a useful one. So at this stage, we will not be asked, you won't change your topic. You may vary it, you may add a little bit, we are also going to be asking you as students going forward to, to indicate every time you register which one of the niche areas uh, you, your study has, has veered towards or included. And the reason we do that is firstly, we want to populate uptake of niche areas, but we also want to, to know that student X has shown an interest in uh, aeronautical studies, and if so, when we have financial, when we have access to financial opportunities that could work, we know which students to direct them to. So all this issue about um, having a, a coherent way of, of actually pulling together people's active engagement in, in the niche areas is all intentional. It's intended to make your life easier. So, um, what what I have done and and the the next few slides are actually only there as a help. Uh, I I don't I don't set them up with the intention of speaking through them, but I will name and share with you what it is. And many people will want to know 
what is the difference between uh, a niche area, what is the difference between a catalytic niche area. And, and, and a niche and the easy bit is, um, so if you think of a catalyst in, in its in its use, that if uh, those of you who are in the chemistry world of things who deal with chemicals and stuff will know that a catalyst is in itself not the, the thing that you focus on, but it is the thing that allows the different um, uh, components of a compound to mix better or in a reaction, you want something to speed up. So we, when we mention catalytic niche areas, we're talking about them as being bridging things, as, as forms of knowledge that bridge our ability to do certain things. So when I say to you, integrate something, I'm integrating it so it gives you a, a shortcut to better unpacking the thing that you're studying because you've now gone to a niche that's known to be important and so forth. So, so the catalytic bit tells you that it is not, um, it differs from the traditional use of niche areas without catalytic tends to imply that the person must give up all topics and focus on it. So like the university has got niche areas such as Africanization, decolonization. We are, when they are specified that way, we are saying to candidates, we want your, your, your research to be about decolonization. But with, when we are talking about a catalytic niche option, we are saying utilize this thing, utilize this subject to help you to to better understand your primary topic and to to understand it more convincingly in a in a way that has better traction so that is the the functional dif difference uh, of course i've i've named these for you already what we then have to do is um uh when people talk about definitions and i was saying about definitions that look my, I could not limit our engagement to defining um, the catalytic niche areas for, I could not define the listed catalytic niche areas because in different, if seen by people from different disciplines, they mean different things. So uh, marine studies, for example, if looked at by if someone were to talk about defining marine studies, but they were an art student, they would define it in terms of um, the, de the depiction of, of, of art in areas that are to do with marine ecology and so forth. But if you ask marine studies to be defined by somebody who is in agriculture, they would give a, a more agriculturally give um, located conceptualization of it. So, and that is why we do not define them beyond just explaining to you that marine studies is the study of things that happen in the water, aquatic things, and so forth. But beyond, and, and we are, I'm stating this to allow you to actually have the freedom to go and say, what does, what would marine studies definition look like to me as a student of theology. Um, what would marine studies look like to me as a student of, of, of communication sciences and so forth? And that is, and, and remember with all of this, we are, we are pushing you to think outside of the box. So we are not, we, we cannot start by creating a box and then say, think outside the box when we fixed you in the box. So everything about the utilization, optimization, the integration is an out of the box activity that's founded on us achieving those four things that we wanted to do, that we wanted to give you greater access to, 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 to funds for your study. We want to address long standing legacies of disadvantage. We want to make sure that areas that are big societal problems get attention and so forth. So that is essentially what um, we, we have here. I have several other slides 
that are just examples and there are examples that I've touched on already in, in earlier formats of this conversation, but I've inserted them on here. So in my absence, you are able to kind of come back and say, um, let me look at the presentation and I understand what it's about. Without getting into much more specified college specific student specific engagements, I want to stop there. I want to stop my presentation on the optimization of, of the niche areas there and invite you uh, invite you to present questions to me.